Hello, my name is Steve Samuel, and uh, today I want to show some techniques that I believe are very, very important uh, in NX when it comes to doing industrial design. And in my view, and I've uh, been in the business for a while, uh, industrial design is greatly augmented uh, when you are able to um, envision a piece of geometry that you want to create. And um, it's greatly augmented when you uh, do a hand sketch. And it's interesting, you know, in this day of um, incredibly powerful CAD tools, uh, I'm advocating a hand sketch. And the reason why I'm advocating the hand sketch is because, in general, it's so much quicker uh, to do a hand sketch than you could ever do CAD in. Um, in a hand sketch, uh, you kind of capture more of the feeling in my view and you are able to do what-if scenarios um, much faster and the hand sketch kind of forces you to um, kind of envision the geometry um, you know I'm adding a little shading to this you don't really have to do that but I find it uh, makes it easier to understand what I'm creating and then uh, with the hand sketch I can also put on the basic dimensions that I'm going to be using and kind of make decisions about that. Uh, so I highly recommend that if you're not that good at hand sketching, um, and you don't have to be that good, uh, you, but you practice a little. There's, you know, certain tricks. Um, and... Uh, you start off with a hand sketch like this. Uh, once you have the hand sketch, then the next thing you'll want to do is really delve into the features, um, the sketches, the features that you're going to use uh, to do the actual uh, model. And having the hand sketch allows you to, like I said, make the decisions that you're going to be uh, making uh, or I should say pre-make the decisions that are going to be required to make a good model. So there you have it. When I do the actual modeling, I want to make sure that uh, at these locations, these locations where this kind of uh, arc um, meets this line, that there's curvature continuity right there. So I don't get these um, really bad kind of um, amateur looking shadows falling off of this piece of geometry. So I'll be going more into that in just a moment. But there's your hand sketch. So now that I've done the hand sketch, I want to continue in CAD. And I'm going to start off with a sketch that captures the basic shape that I've created in the hand sketch. So here I'm creating a square. And that square is going to bound. It's going to basically be the uh, bounding box. You know what I can do uh, a little simpler is use the rectangle command and do a center like this. And I know from the hand sketch that what I want here is 140. And uh, right here, I want 75. This is obviously a top view of the shape that I require. And now that's going to be the bounding box. That's going to be what I use to actually control the geometry. And so what I would like to do is make that reference. So I'm just going to go to the uh, task manager uh, or the uh, selection filter, select the curves, convert them to reference. Okay. And now I've got to do something interesting. I've got to basically make um, a decision as to where my takeoff point is going to be and uh, you'll see what I mean by that in a second and I'm going to start with a numerical value whoops start with a numerical value uh, right here Let's just uh, go into the dimension editor and double click this and I'm going to start with the number 70 and there is a method to my madness which you'll you'll see in a whole in a, in a minute um, I'm going to put a little center point there um, or I'm going to make a make that line segment a midpoint 
cool. Then I'm going to mirror it. I'm just going to grab that line and mirror it about the x-axis, like so. Okay, and now here comes the tricky part. I'm going to go to the spline function. And I would like at least G2 curvature continuity with the quote-unquote arc that goes and connects these two. So I'm going to select on the end point of that line that I just selected. That's end point. Oops, come on. And I'm going to say G2. Then I'm going to select this point right here. And then I'm going to select again the end point of this. Come on. Let's see, why is it not cooperating? All right, I'm having troubles here, so here's what I'm going to do. Let's control Z. Okay, let's control B. Let's just blank this out now that we've got the control. Or I need these. Okay, so okay. There we go. And so I'm going to go back to the spline tool. Select the end point of this, go G2, go to the point entity, uh, go G2 on that, select this point, go G2. All right, and say apply, and I'll do that again on the other side. Um, it's not liking that. It's not liking that. So let's uh, control Z that. Let's try it again with only two G2s. So we'll grab this, say G2. We'll grab the center point, and we'll grab this, and say G2. And we'll get something that cooperates. Apply. And obviously, NX is giving us troubles. So lots of times, you have to have a workaround. And the workaround that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little point entity there little point entity there. I'm going to close this and finish. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is go into curve and do a studio spline. And I'll have a G2, a point, and a G2. There we go. And apply. So this won't flummox the sketcher. There we go. G2, point, and a G2. It's okay. All right, so now I've got a shape that is of interest to me. Uh, the transitions from curve to line are G2 curvature continuous now. And so that is a very good thing. That's going to make it much more attractive to the user of this tool or whatever it is. It's a, it's a container. It's like a food container. And now I can iterate on the straight length, so to speak. I can make it 50 and, and say finish. Okay, so that is a good start. So now that I have that, I'm going to follow up with the other dimension, which is the, um, 90, the 90 millimeter uh, depth with this little 5 millimeter portion on it. And so that's going to be a sketch in the XZ plane. So I'll hit that. I'll create a sketch right here. Say OK like that. And I'm going to put a little line segment down here. And this line segment is also going to be a reference line. And what I'm going to do is just use that line segment to um, establish my depth there. So that's going to be 90. All right, cool. And now I can be really creative uh, and I can do some more kind of um, uh, creation or not creation. I could do some, 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 some um, sketching, some uh, sculpting, if you will. I'm going to sculpt. So I'm just playing with the shape here. Okay, I'm going to go for that. Uh, I'll say okay there. And we also wanted to have one more thing. A dimension from there to there is supposed to be five, five millimeters. And one little line segment, and we're almost done with this design. I'll go straight down like that. 
Okay. And we'll now finalize this shape by doing a surface swept. And we're going to ensure that it says anywhere along guide. Okay. So we're going to have an easy time of using this as the section. We've got a guide string that looks like this. We have to make sure that the perimeter law is just constant, like so. Say OK. We need uh, to uh, shell this thing out. So we go to the home and shell um, to be to have consistency with our sketch. That's uh, two millimeters. And so there is our design. And let's just clean it up a little bit. Let's do uh, control W. Let's get rid of the coordinate systems and the sketches and the curves. So that's what our design is looking like. And now where the rubber meets the road is if when we do an analysis and we do a section analysis and we select the surface here, we'll definitely want to show the combs and we'll want to suggest a scaling factor. And if we have a large number of um, we have a large number of curves. Let's do like a hundred. Uh, let's see what is it doing. Ah, I'm sorry. Number of needles. There we go. We can see that the transition here from line to arc. It's not really an arc. It's a it's a spline. But we could see that it's nice and smooth, and we can see we can basically validate that this industrial design is. Um, not got these kind of discontinuities that make it look bad. Um, that is a very, very important uh, concept in industrial design, especially these days when we have the tools that enable us to see these things. And so there you have it. There's our design. And this has been um, an industrial design tip by Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. I hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, you can see many other videos at www.designviz.com or check our Design Visionaries YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. It's a privilege to give you these informational video videos. And uh, please contact us if you want training or if you want us to do designs for you. Or if you really like the videos, uh, please give us a little line. If you don't like them, ah, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Take care.